come this morning thanking you, O oh God, for your many blessings. We thank you, O oh God, because this morning you saw fit to kiss us with the breath of life and tell us to get up and let's do it again. There are so many, God, that didn't wake up on this side of heaven yes. this morning. Yes. But God, you said grace and mercy is still extended unto you. Yes. So get up, look up, speak up, praise up, yes, and believe that I am still in complete control. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, that in spite of all of our shortcomings, you are still yet blessed. Yes, Lord. You have given us the activities of our limbs. You have clothed yes, us in our right frame of mind. Yes. We may not have all the things that we want, but you have shown sure enough supply our needs according to your riches. Yes, Lord. And so for that, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, that not only when we looked up, we had a roof over our head, but we yes, were able Lord. to go in the closet and make a choice of what we wanted to wear. Yes, there were some that went in the kitchen and made a choice of what they wanted to eat, but yes. God, we got into our vehicles and we made it into the house of the Lord yes, yet again. Yes, yes, yes. So for that, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We ask you, O oh God, to come by here this morning. Yes, Lord. For God, someone here needs you like yes, never before. Lord. Yes, yes. There's someone here, Father, under the sound of my voice that may be having some ailments or some sickness in their body. So we ask you to come by here and see about them. Yes. There may be someone here, God, that may be a little heartbroken and dismayed this morning. Yes, Lord. And we know, God, that you are not only a burden bearer, but that you are a heart mender. So we ask you to come by here this morning. Right now, Lord. God, we know that there are some that are here right now that may be going through some difficulties with their finances yes, and other things. Yes, but yes. we know, oh God, that you are still the supplier. Yes, and we know, Father God, that one visitation from you at the moment that we need you the most, Father, will shift the complexity of everything that is going on around us. Yes, yes. I ask you, oh God, that you allow everyone that is under the sound of my voice right now be more focused on who you are than what's going on in their life. Because if they can lean not into their own understanding, but yet as they trust you, God, acknowledge you in everything that they do, God, you said that you will direct the direction of their life and the things that go on in their life. Yes. So I'm asking you, God, now to just continue to take complete control over everything. Yes. I'm asking that your Holy Spirit visit us here at Cedar Grove this morning, God, and and begin to sweep through this place like never before. Yes, I'm asking that your anointing saturate the walls, the, the floor, the ceiling, and everything from the back door to the pulpit. Yes. And we ask you, oh God, that you just continue to have your way. Yes. We thank you for those that are here, God. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're about to do. We praise your name, God, because you've given us the ability to lift up our voice and give you praise. Yes, so God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus. We thank you for your love, your grace and mercy. Yes. We thank you for your power. Yes. We thank you, God, for the danger seen and unseen that you have protected us from. Yes. We thank you, oh God, because whether or not we are all what we're supposed to be, you have guaranteed you're going to be all you're supposed to be. Yes. And we thank you for it now. Yes. Now, we ask you to have your way as we get out of your way. Yes. We ask you, oh God, to just continue to do what you do. Yes. And Father, we thank you and we'll give your name praise. We'll give your name honor. And we'll give your name glory forevermore. It is in the matchless, divine, holy, and precious name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Yes. Amen. Do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me. Do Lord.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surround us. So, yeah. you know, I ain't going to be beat up. And bag for the rest of my life. <laughs> Amen. 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 Second time coming back and being obedient. And I just want to yes, uh, praise God for you and for your your love and your dedication Amen. to the faith. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. We just got up this morning just to tell God thank you. All right. Thank you for all his many blessings. Thank you for just. Being a good guy. Yeah. yeah. For thinking about it. Yeah. For thinking about it. I thank yeah. God just for Cedar Grove. I love y'all. I love you too. Me. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I truly do. Each and every one of y'all. Yeah. I, because I looked around and I didn't see you. Then I saw your purse. I said, okay, she here. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I was like, I ain't got to call her this week. <laughs> but I really do love y'all. I really do. I really do. Um, you already know how I feel about you, but I just thank God for how he's been good and kind. Amen. And around the God to my pastor, Pastor Kim, oh, and bless. my dad back there. Oh, bless. God is just awesome. Yeah. 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 And when you realize how awesome he is, guess yeah. what? You begin to depend on him more. Amen. You begin a relationship yeah. with him. Because yeah. it ain't about in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did, Yes, sir. I can put on a suit, come in here, and y'all think I'm the holiest thing in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but it's about the life you live on the outside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> when I see him, my heart just likes him. Okay, Miss Chantel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want y'all to understand 
that that guy could have had intentions on pulling up and shooting. Yeah. Yeah. He could have emptied a clip, but yeah. God's yeah. angels are around yeah. him. Yeah. He could have emptied 15 bullets and never hit me off the yes. But I just need you to know, every so once in a while, you have some flashbacks. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. me. it just might be me, Pastor Wes. It might just be me. Yeah. I don't know. I, if it's just me, yeah, I'm going to ask God for some, some more deliverance. <laughs> Every once in a while, again, you know, uh, but I just call that being cautious. Amen. 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 Yes, my wife, she's a little under the weather, but um, she went and had some tests this past week, and they're doing some more extensive tests. Um, she did have a mini stroke. That was part of some things that had happened. And uh, now they're trying to rule out that it's not anything um, like colon cancer or anything. Yeah. Um, but they are saying that she has lupus. And so they are saying that it could be um, a result from stress-related um, issues that have made the lupus more aggressive. Yeah. And so we'll just continue to pray um, for her. And so now she's like, well, they, they told me I gotta go on and change my eating. And Amen. I gotta Amen. lose some weight. Amen. Yeah. And then you know, here come that, here come that question. Uh -huh. You gonna help me? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I explained to her, you know how long it took me to get this body. <laughs> now you want me to alter it. <laughs> so we are, as of today, uh -huh. we are going on a man of better way of healthy eating. Yeah. Amen. Um, so I'm, I'm an avid believer that whether I want to or not, it's necessary for her. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I dare not make it more difficult for her, um, but I'd rather sacrifice Amen. and let God's will be done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want to thank the Cedar Grove family, Mother Maddie, um, as I came in, there were some cards on my desk, and I appreciate mm -hmm. you. A little, 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 little thank you goes a long way. Amen. 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 I want to share with you. I, I don't do things for the accolades of people. I do things according to what God places upon my heart to do. Amen. I know it was delayed, Mother. It should have been earlier in the month, but stuff started hitting you from the left, the right, or just north, south, east, and the west. Yeah. <laughs> and with no excuses at all. When God says it's right, it's right. Yeah. I think last week was a very, very, very pristine moment yeah. um, for encouragement. Mm -hmm. And so I want the Cedar Grove family to know, be encouraged. Yeah. Amen. Be a good cheer. Yeah. Let's stay strong. Amen. And let's focus on not the things that were, okay. but let's focus on what is right. and Amen. what is to come. Yeah. Because as long as, as, as I heard my dad tell me one day, he says, You'll never get where you're going looking in the rearview mirror. All right, all right. Amen. Amen. The only reason we need to look back is to make sure ain't nobody coming up on us too quick. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Papa Ford is not here with us this morning. He was having some pains in his back, but he sends us love. Amen. And uh, we just want to share with you this morning. Amen. Um, and the next time we bring some ribs down here, we'll bring some beef ones too. Amen. I, Amen. I uh, make sure we get everything for everybody. Praise the Lord. So we'll make sure we have an assortment so that everyone will be able to partake. Um, meet me over in um, the book of 1 Samuel. The book of 1 Samuel. Um, God has been dealing with me this week on, on this young man by the name of Samuel. And there's some things that he showed me in a different way like this morning or this week mm -hmm. that I found to be very, very interesting. Amen. We read the story, but when God is ready to give you a certain type of revelation, mm -hmm. he'll show Amen. you some things that you read over too fast the last couple of times you read it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Little Ross. I like what Mother Maddie said. You, you're a spark to put down. <laughs> you, and there's something about your spirit that actually makes it easy because you understand. Amen. Amen. You, Amen. you understand. Amen. When somebody understands and they're excited about not what somebody is saying, but what God is saying, that just helps you to be more excited about what God is saying. Amen. 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 First Samuel chapter 3. 
First Samuel chapter three. Meet me there. We're going to look in verse number one. I'm going to write a few verses here, um, and I just want to share with you. I, I just, I just want to share something with you. Amen. Amen. We have the rest of your feet. Amen. First Samuel chapter three. We're going to begin at verse number one, and I want to welcome our visitor again. I remember he and his wife. Amen. I even have his number in there on the desk. Amen. It's so good to see you all again. Amen. The word of the, of the Lord says this. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had began or begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of, the, of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went, and he lied down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Somebody catch that part right there. Mm -hmm. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, so he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for he did not call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lied down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as the other times, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears you. Amen. For a few minutes, I just want to use as a subject, are you listening? Are you listening? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you listening? Amen. Have your seats. Father, thank you. Praise and glorify your holy name. For you alone, O God, are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy. We thank you now. Thank you, All of you, none of me, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This story is very interesting simply because we look at all that's transpired here in chapter number three. Mm -hmm. But in order for us to get a full, full, full understanding, we must go all the way to chapter one. Yes. And when we find out, because we want to find out, we're finding out here about Samuel. But we got to find out about before Samuel was sent. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, this particular story talks about a lady by the name of Hananiah. Or Hannah, Hananiah, Hannah. And she uh, was married to a young man by the name of Elkaniah. Mm -hmm. And it begins to tell us that she was someone that was unable to bear children. Uh -huh. But yet, Hananiah, who was Elkaniah's other wife, uh, was spitting them out like they was uh, skitters. <laughs> and I say that. And, and, and she was one of these honorary kind of women because the Bible says that she was she was taunting Hannah and, and, and teasing her and making fun of her because she couldn't have any kids. Mm -hmm. But then when Hannah took the time to go and pray before the Lord, yes. the Bible says that she was sincere about her prayer as she went into the temple and she began to pray and isn't it amazing that where she was praying at, we find this young man by the name of Eli. Amen. And Eli himself in this particular time, we need to understand that Eli was the second to the last judge that the children of Israel would ever have. However, I was joking. Somebody got quiet, so they're not reading the Bible. They're not reading the Bible. Because remember, in this time, they were having judges because kings had not been introduced to them yet. 
Amen. And so we find now that, 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 that we have Samuel being one of the last judges, I'm, I'm sorry, Eli being one of the last judges. He's inside of the temple. Now remember, a judge himself is the one that's over everything. He was the one that made sure that order was established. He was the one that made sure that the priests were doing what they were supposed to do. He made sure that the Ark of the Covenant was operating in the capacity by which it should operate. So therefore, his job was very important, not just to oversee, but to also have clear clarity in the things that he is seeing. Amen. Are you with me? And so the Bible declares that Hannah was in the, the, the temple here and she was praying and she was so caught up. See, if you ain't never been caught up like this in, 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 in praying and praising and worshiping God, you ain't going to understand exactly what they're talking about. But have you ever been at the moment where you were so caught up that when people looked at you, they perceived you as being drunk or loaded or high or something because you are so intoxicated in the presence of the Holy Ghost that it appears to someone that does not know who God is and don't understand what you're doing they will look at you and perceive that you're something or doing something or you're acting a certain kind of way that you're not. Amen. Here we find this judge looking at her and saying that she must be drunk. And she says, no, 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 no. I'm fully engulfed in worshiping God. I, I, you don't know what my burden is. You don't know what I'm suffering. You don't know what's going on in my heart. You don't know what's going on in my house. I'm at a place right now. Where I need something from God. Yes. And I'm letting it all hang out. Because I ain't got nothing to lose at this point. But I got everything to gain. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody out here that's been there. But every so once in a while, whether you're in the tabernacle or whether you're in the secret place at your own house, you need to just strip yourself of everything that will keep you from being drunk in the presence of God through the Holy Ghost. So that God can begin to do some things because when you strip the things off that's hindering you from giving him your all, now you allow him to pour and saturate you with his Holy Ghost, yeah, yeah, yeah. with his presence, with his power. Yes, Lord. And then you can clearly hear from him. All right, all right. So the Bible says that Eli was like, well, <laughs> okay, I missed that one. <laughs> with it all being said, God heard her prayer. Uh -huh. The Bible says he touched her womb. Yes. She had this baby, but in her prayer, she says, God, if you, I want you to catch this, because this is the thing that leads us to where we are. Amen. She says, God, if you bless me, uh, and she was, she was specific. Yes. She didn't say, God, bless me with a kid. Yeah. She says, God, if you bless me yes. with a son. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. She says, not only will a razor never touch his head, uh -huh. she says, but I'll give him back to you. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. Watch this. Yeah. She didn't say for a little while. Amen. She says, I'll give him back to you for the rest of his life. Yes. Yes. In other words, she made a commitment that I'll carry this baby yes. full term. Yes. And when this baby has come out of my body, I will breastfeed this baby until he's old enough to where he doesn't have to depend on me to feed him. And then I will give him back to you for you to do what you need to do. I don't know if you understand the magnitude of that simply because this woman wanted a baby really bad. But yet she loved the Lord enough to say, if you give him, I'll give him back. No worries about it. I'm not going to be in a place where when the baby comes, I'm going to recant what I said. But she says, I'm going to give him back. From that very moment when God touched her womb, he touched her womb with an anointing that only God can touch it with. Come on here somebody. When God says before you entered into your mother's womb I knew you. He knew Samuel before he even allowed Hannah to understand that she was about to get pregnant. So therefore, purpose, assignment, anointing, and obedience through direction was already established before the seed was even fertilized. Come on here, somebody. So the Bible says that after she weaned him, she gave him to Eli. Isn't this amazing? That Eli, being who he is, still was about to be like Moses. 
and not get what God promised him because of the choices that he made along the way. Amen. Moses made the choice to, to, to hit instead of speak. Mm -hmm. And God says, well, look at here. You ain't going to get it, but I want you to groom this one up because he's about to take over. Amen. The same thing happened here because Eli himself was in disorder. He was somebody who had sons that was not doing They were priests. And how do you make your sons priests who don't know God, who don't reverence God, who don't honor God, nor the, 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 the title that they hold? I want somebody to catch this. We got too many people, Pastor West, in church right now with titles that don't even know God. You're running around bishops. You can't spell bishop. You don't know what a bishop does. How are you a bishop when the Bible says that a bishop is supposed to be a man that's honorable, a man with one wife, a man that can hear from the Lord, and you're walking around with a wife and four boo things, and you're messing with the people in the church and the money. You ain't sacrificing nothing but but yet you're a bishop and want people to follow you I come by to serve you notice that God says here he says uh huh you keep on doing that but I want you to understand that your arm is going to be cut off in your house your house's arm is going to be cut off matter of fact he says, and then he says listen nobody in your house will ever be older than the young man he told Eli he said look if you don't get this thing together you, now isn't it amazing that he was in direct violation of who God was and what God said because of his sons but yet God still used him. What am I coming to say? Yeah. Don't believe that everything that's in the pulpit that's bad ain't being worked out for the good yeah. that God has for you. Yeah. Because in these days, we got folks, we got preachers that, that, that look like the devil themselves. Yeah. But God is using them to bless somebody in the midst of all that's going on. I come by to tell you, but the only way you're going to understand that is if you can recognize the voice of God. Yeah. And you can hear when God speaks. Because God will speak through anything that he so desires. Yeah. I got a witness. Amen. So we get to this place right here mm -hmm. in verse number one, chapter three. Yes. And this one, this one right here puzzled me a little bit at the beginning mm -hmm. when it says, now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the first thing happens is anytime we see the word minister to, mm -hmm. we're the kind of people, Chantel, that always think he preached. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want to to believe it. Oh, he missed. Oh, he sang a song. He, he, he did something to, to the definition that we give minister. But I want you to understand that anytime you are operating in the auspice of obedience, it is a form of ministry. So if I've been put up underneath your care, and I'm doing what is required of me yeah. while I'm under your care. Yes. That is a form of ministry. All right, all right, all right. Have I got a witness? Yes. But what I like about this is it didn't say that he ministered to Eli. Mm -hmm. But he ministered to the Lord mm -hmm. before Eli. Amen. So in other words, what he was doing was bringing reverence to God while yet in the midst of who his mother entrusted his king. Amen. Okay, let me bring it back this way so I can help it a little bit. It's when you go to a church, you're not supposed to examine what the pastor is and is not doing. Your job is to come in and worship the Lord before the man or the woman that God has entrusted you in their head. Because I need you to understand that when you are obedient and you begin to worship, the power of God will come through and keep things in order because of your obedience and your submission to God and not your submission to man. See, we miss it because sometimes when people get on our nerves in the pulpit, we leave and we abort our assignment when the peace of God is only there because we are there. And when we leave, the peace leaves. But now I need you to understand that when God's direction is in place and something needs to be done, we have to stand still until God says it's time to go. 
So the Bible says that he ministered to the Lord. Mm. Now understand. And then the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Mm. In other words, it wasn't a whole lot of revelation. Uh -huh. It wasn't a whole lot of prophecy. In fact, it was a whole lot of people just being wild. Amen. Doing what they wanted to do. Yeah. People was making up their own stuff. Yeah. You have all of these different tribes that was, we don't like this, we don't like that, we don't like the other. So they were doing their own thing. I'm, 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 I'm talking to some churches right Amen. now. We, we, we don't want to do what we know governs God. Yeah. But we want to do what governs our denomination. Somebody yeah. better catch this. Yeah. I want you to understand, I, I have a problem with, when we get to the place to where tradition is so bad that, that we won't allow certain people to speak because of, according to our customs, that was older than the people that's custom. Amen. You know I mean? Amen. That, that we, we're still stuck on Don't know why we're doing it, but we're still stuck on it. Women are not supposed to be in the pulpit. Says who? Women are not supposed to be here. Says who? Amen. Women are supposed to sit in the back of the church and be quiet. Says who? I need you to understand that the same man that's up and thinking that he's arrived, he's only here because a woman carried him long enough for him to be here. So if she's good enough to carry you for you to stand up and speak, then she's good enough for God to use for you to speak. And I need you to understand, women sometimes speak better than men because they're more passionate about the move of God than men are. And they're going to tell you like the T.I. is and not worry about what you got to say about it. I'm one of those, you better preach, daughter. Amen. You better talk about it, daughter. Yeah. Have you gotten it? Because see, we get in this old testament, this old religiosity, and the first thing we say is what people ain't supposed to do. Yeah. But I'd rather a woman sold out for God get up and preach the gospel yeah. than one of these old bootleg slick willies come up and give and mislead a whole lot of people. Because I want you to understand we're living in the last days and somebody's got to listen. Yeah. So the Bible begins to tell us that now here Samuel is in a place mm -hmm. never been introduced to God. Yes. Never been introduced to his voice. Mm -hmm. None of this. Mm -hmm. And so now he's hearing from God. And it tells you here that it says that Eli's eyes were dim. In other words, uh -huh. he was at an old age. He was losing his sight. Amen. And it says that now Samuel keeps going back to his room after he hears this call. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Samuel responded to what he knew. Mm -hmm. I can't acknowledge something that I don't know. All right, man. All right, man. Reverend, this is why I have a problem when Christians say it's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Or when they say, I should have listened uh -huh. to that book. Hold on. This ain't Tom and Jerry. You don't have an angel on one side and a devil on the other side. Amen. When the Holy Ghost began to speak to you, he speaks to you clearly enough. And you should have had a relationship with him long enough to hear. The Bible says that my sheep know my voice. And enough, come on. But if you don't understand who you are, how do you understand when who you are speak to who you are? If you didn't have so much hell in your life, you wouldn't have to worry about who's right. speaking. You would know who's speaking. That's right. That's right. But can I share something with you? If what is being spoken to you causes you to have to second guess, hmm. then you know it's clearly from the Lord. Amen. Because the enemy ain't going to give it to you for you to think about it. Uh -huh. The enemy going to give it to you for you to respond on it real quick. All right. All right. See, the enemy want to make it easy, but God is going to give you something to make you think about it. Yeah. Because he's going to let you know, listen, it's me. But I want you to catch this. See, he's going to make you do something that ain't comfortable for you in the status that you're in. God will speak to you and say, give that homeless man $5 and you only got $7 in your pocket. Lord, but you know what? And you walk off and you sit here and say, you know what? I don't know what that voice was telling me. And you miss the blessing that was around the corner for you because you were so busy not understanding when God speaks, you ought to listen. Yeah. 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 So the Bible says that after the third time, Eli, even in the midst of all of his turmoil, yes. recognized two things. One, that it had to be God. Yeah. But the other thing, hold on, I never even introduced him to God. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Yeah. So instead of him taking time to explain to him who God was, mm -hmm. he told him 
respond to God. Amen. Amen. See, we spend so much time trying to paint a picture of who God is yeah. while we are still standing in being the opposite of what God called us to be. All right, all right, yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, yeah. I heard a little, mother, I heard a lady say yesterday, she was preaching yesterday, and she said this. She says, people crack her up because people that walk in unforgiveness, uh-huh. it's like they take poison, but expect the people they don't forgive to die. Amen. Which is the same thing. How do I introduce you to somebody who I don't even reference enough in my life? Because I need you to understand, sometimes what I do speak louder than what I say. Yes. So now Eli had never introduced him, but yet Eli recognized that it had to be God. So instead of him cutting around the bush, he says, speak, let him know. Next time he calls you, let him know this. Your servant, here God, here I am. Your servant is listening. Watch. And this is what I want you to understand. The Bible says in the book of Romans, it says that if we confess, Mm -hmm. until you get into a relationship with God through your confession and through the belief in your heart, how are you ever going to recognize his name? How are you going to ever recognize? See, back there, and this time, they had things that were going on. But they didn't have it as bad as we have it right now. They didn't have internet. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have TikTok. They didn't have Instagram. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have all of these things, Mother, that would keep them in a place of disarray. Because I come by to tell you, if you're looking at these social medias, you will find out right now, you will find more false prophets on the social media than you've ever found anywhere before. Not only that, I'm cracking up because, Chantel, we got people that are on the social media that is literally mocking and making fun of God. And they believe it's cute. And when you look down at the followers, you will see that they got six and seven thousand or five hundred thousand people that are following and commenting and liking because if they have never been formally introduced to God himself, then their spirit will never be in a discomfortable spot when they see things that is not orchestrated by God. And I come by to tell you that you're going to keep playing with God and social media will be the place that you will lose your life. Have I got a witness up in here? And so what God is simply saying to us as a people, you need to get to the place to where you sharpen your relationship with me. Because once you opened up your mouth and you confessed that I am who I said I am, and once you said that you believe that my daddy brought me to heaven to sit at his right side, once you say you believe that I died upon an old rugged cross and was raised again, you should have been at a place at that point to where when I talk to you in the middle of the night and the TV is not on and the radio is not on and ain't nobody in the house talking and you hear that voice, you should automatically just say, here I am, Lord. Your servant is listening. I need you to speak to me. And some of us miss, because I want to tell you something, Reverend, that there are a number of blessings that have been assigned to you every single day. And some of us miss those blessings because of the midnight hour. Have you ever had that conversation with somebody on your job and say, I don't know why I was woke at two o'clock in the morning. I just woke up and I couldn't go back to sleep. I just tossed and I turned. I turned on the TV and I turned on the radio. I walked around the house and I just could not sleep. But I come back to tell you something. That if you woke up out of a dead sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's a clear indication that God is trying to talk to you. You ought to say, That problem 
when I hear the voice of the Lord. My soul my question is how many times have you heard the Lord and didn't respond Amen. Amen. how many lives didn't receive your portion of their blessing mm -hmm. because you didn't respond how many times have someone connected to you suffered Mm -hmm. Because you didn't respond. All right. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. How many times have you missed leading someone to the presence of God? All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Because you didn't respond. Yes. Amen. Yes. Can I tell you something? Mm. Yes, sir. Stop wondering why you get woke up in the middle of the night. Mm. It ain't something you ate. Amen. 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 <laughs> But it's something you accepted. Amen. Can I say that? Amen. If you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, yes. He don't come when it's comfortable for you. Mm. So true. Amen. Amen. But He's gonna come when it's important for you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're only gonna get it when you can respond at the time that is most uncomfortable for yeah, you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. The next time you get woke up at two o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. And you say, God, here I am. Your servant is listening. Yeah. Lay there for about five or ten minutes. Because he ain't going to always speak exactly when you say. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to understand this. Sometimes he ain't going to speak in a voice that you can hear. But you need to go pick up that Bible. Because yes, the sir. moment you pick up the Bible and open it up, I guarantee you he's going to lead you to the scripture that's going to speak to your circumstances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reverend Ross cracks me up with people. You know, baby, I was, I was going through something. Uh -huh. And... Papa opened up this Bible. Yeah. And it was a coincidence. I just happened to open up the Bible to the to the passage of scripture uh -huh. that, that answered my question. What? <laughs> so in other words, you're saying God is like a roulette wheel. Wow. You place a bet and call a number and hope it lands on it. Right now. <laughs> that ain't how God operates. Yes, Lord. God says, when I'm trying to speak to you, mm -hmm. I ain't got time for that's gambling. Right, that's right. right. Because the thing is, in gambling, somebody's got to win. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Somebody's got to lose. Yes. This old songwriter says, and somebody even got to play the fool. All mm. right, all right. Y'all don't act like y'all can say it, dog. Y'all don't act like y'all can say it. I want to sing it for y'all. So far, so I have yeah. flashbacks. Like, hey, hey, hey. Now, we want to <laughs> Why gamble with your salvation? So mm. true. If God wakes you up at 2 o'clock in the morning, Amen. it is structure. And not only is it structure, but it's also going to be beneficial. Amen. If you don't hear him speaking to you audibly, <clears throat> pick up your word. Let me share something with you. A lot of times, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, there are gospel stations on. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times, and watch this, most of us won't flip it because it's an old Protestant man that is not as coded as we are. <laughs> he don't have a hope. Mm -hmm. But it's a reason why he got about three or 4,000 people sitting there. Amen. So he's saying something. Amen. And I guarantee you, if you sit still long enough, and take yourself out of, out of the physicality of things and put yourself in the spirituality of things. The way God wants to speak to you, he'll speak to you. There are some of us that the enemy is waiting for you at your job. Amen. At 2 o'clock in the morning, God wants to wake you up to share with you how to handle without even telling you what's coming. Because mm. a lot of us, if he tells us what's coming when we get to work, most of us gonna get up and call me and say, Amen. <laughs> Come on, say amen, shame the devil. <laughs> because God won't tell us everything that's coming, Josh, because so many of us have tried to abort it or try to fix it ourselves. Amen. 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 And when God wants to move on us and through us, mm 
he ain't got to tell us because his will has got to be done. So he may wake you up in the middle of the night and just tell you that, hey, listen, you need to read the scripture. You need to get up in the morning and do X, Y, Z. You need to blah, 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 blah. And when the situation happens, then instantly your spirit will begin to illuminate because it'll say, this is why he won't be up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Amen, amen. Because had he not spoke to me at 2 o'clock when I still had sleep in my eye, that was that good sleep. I had yeah, drool all yeah. down. Matter of fact, the drool had made it to the middle of my chest. I was drooling so hard. Yeah. Sleeping so good. Yeah. I, he told me. Uh -huh. Now listen, once you have heard from him, yes. you will instantly go back to sleep. Once you have responded to his awakening, yes. you'll go back to sleep. Amen. Otherwise, you're going to be up two or three hours. <laughs> and then at 45 minutes before your alarm go off, you're going to go back to sleep. And you're mad in 45 minutes because you got to get up. I get up all night long. Well, listen. <laughs> I still ain't heard from you. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Do not turn the volume down. Man. When he wants to speak. All right. True. All right. But just like your cell phone, uh -huh. leave it on and turn it all the way up. Hmm. All night long. Amen. Yes, sir. My phone rings at 2 o'clock in the morning. My wife can be in a dead sleep. I'm talking about snoring and shifting gears. And she hear that cell phone ring, her head pop up. Who calling you at 2 o'clock? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes I just. Wrench over, grab the phone, and give it to her. Uh -huh. I don't know. You tell her we sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I want him to wake her up one night that he wakes me up, uh -huh. so I can tell her, "Oh, he called you too, huh?" Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because at that moment, uh -huh. he's telling us both something Amen. that's going to be beneficial for us as a team. So true. Because usually if he, if he wakes one of you up, it's because he's giving you an assignment by yourself. Mm -hmm. Or he's confirming something for you, just you. Mm -hmm. Or whatever it is. I need you to know we don't have to be at a place of not having peace. We don't have to be at a place of not understanding. We don't have to be at a place where we're suffering. The Bible says that we are the head mm -hmm. and not the tail. Yes. That we are above mm -hmm. and not belief. Yes. That we are the leader. And not the bottom. Yes, but the reason why we're the opposite of what he said Amen. is because we don't want to respond Amen. when he speaks. So true. Oh, that Amen. Amen. Samuel went on to be one of the greatest Amen. men of God that there were. Yes. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. You can go all through the Bible. Yes. And you can look and you can look. The Bible even talked about how Samuel had sons that, that weren't the greatest. But Samuel knew how to rebuke them and shut them down. Yes. Have we got a witness? Amen. All of that came from what? His mama praying before he mm -hmm. was even born. Yes. His mama keeping her word. Yes. Placing him under something. Yes. And what she placed him under wasn't completely spiritually correct. Mm -hmm. But it was correct enough for him to get what he needed. Amen. Yeah, his yes. first ministry assignment at his recognition was to prophesy or to speak to the man he was put under. Amen. And not give him a prophecy that made him smile, uh -huh. but gave him a prophecy yes. that would have literally confirmed and broken his heart. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. And these tasks that God gives, yes. he doesn't give you the task hmm. without first preparing you Amen. to complete the task True. and not suffer the repercussion. That the world wants to extend. Yeah. But when Eli died, <clears throat> Samuel had already been given all of the instructions and the training that he needed. Yeah. The same yeah. way that Moses and Joshua did. Mm -hmm. When they buried jo or Moses, Joshua didn't have to lose a step mm -hmm. because he had already been fully instructed, mm -hmm. he had already been fully taught, mm -hmm. and he had already responded when he heard. Samuel did the same thing. Right. My question is, when you hear, mm. will you respond? Amen. 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 All eyes closed, all heads bowed. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for 
for loving us beyond us. We thank you for speaking to us over and over again, even when we don't listen. But God, I'm asking you now that you let the Holy Spirit train our ears more now than ever before. That we can hear from you late in the midnight hour. That we can hear from you, God, in the midst of chaos that's going on all around us. That when you speak to us, God, not only do we hear you, but we respond. Yes. And when we respond, God, we know that we open the door for your glory to come in. We also open up the door for your power and for your will to be done through yes. us. So make us more willing now as we stand before you, God. Yes, we confess our sins. We ask you for forgiveness. Yes. And then we say, use us, God, yes. to help build your kingdom. And we thank you for it now. God, there's somebody in this room that you're going to wake up one day this week at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And instead of them wondering why they're up, let them immediately think and respond and say, God, here I am. Your servant is listening. Speak to them, God. And allow them to experience something in you that will take them further in life because of their obedience and their acknowledgement. Yes, Lord. And we honor you for it now. Thank you. With all eyes closed and all heads bowed, there may be someone that is looking to rededicate your life or accept Christ for the first time. If that's you, just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. You say, I want to rededicate my life or accept him for the first time. The next call is for someone who may be looking to become a member of one of the churches that are here. Uh, we are one church in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be looking to stake your membership. If that is you, just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. As we see that there is none, but there is still yet room at the cross. Father, thank you. Thank you. We honor and praise you and we glorify your name. Yes, Lord. For who you are yes. and for what you are able yes. to do. Yes. And we magnify you now. Give your name all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let us prepare now for our love offering. Come on, come on. Give God some praise.